This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. The heavyweight landscape is slowly beginning to show signs of recovery following the lockdown resulting from the global pandemic. Back in August, we had the explosive encounter between Alexander Povietkin and Dillian White, where Povietkin was dropped twice in the fourth round, before he rallied back to score a dramatic stoppage victory that resurrected his waning career. This was the bout that effectively helped with getting the division back on track, and these two were tentatively scheduled to have a return bout on November 21st. But before that rematch, at the end of this month, we have an interesting matchup between former undisputed cruiserweight champion Alexander Usyk and former heavyweight title challenger Derek Chisora. That one is tentatively scheduled for Halloween, October 31st, just a few short weeks away. Then a week after that, on November 7th, up-and-coming prospect Philip Hergovich is tentatively slated to square off against Rydell Booker. Hergovich is coming off a second-round stoppage against Cartosia just a few weeks back. Then on November 28th, we have a tentatively scheduled contest between two undefeated heavyweight prospects, Joe Joyce and Daniel Dubois. That's an interesting one for sure. And then on December 12th, unified IBF, WBA, WBO heavyweight world champion Anthony Joshua is tentatively slated to defend his titles against Kubrat Pulev. That one will represent the first heavyweight championship contest since things were sidetracked by COVID-19. So that August fight when Povietkin defeated White, that was the fight that got the ball really rolling again during this difficult year for boxing, and indeed, a difficult year for all things beyond boxing. It is very easy to lose sight of the fact that the highly anticipated Megabout rematch between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder actually even happened earlier this year, as that one preceded the unprecedented lockdown. On that note, Fury and Wilder are still supposed to be having a third matchup. This is something that is contractually obligated to happen, and that seems to be headed for some time maybe in December, or perhaps sometime early next year. But the thing of it is, fans aren't especially excited for that one. Fury won their rematch in an absolute mismatch, and in the eyes of many observers, Fury should hold two victories against Wilder, even though officially he has one victory and a draw. But more importantly, the real reason there is less interest in a third fight between Fury and Wilder stems from the fact that the fight boxing fans really want to see is an epic showdown for heavyweight supremacy between Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. In theory, at least, if that fight were to happen next, notwithstanding any would-be shenanigans from the hopelessly incompetent sanctioning bodies, a bout between Fury and Joshua would produce the first undisputed heavyweight champion since Lennox Lewis some 20 years ago. That's the fight boxing fans want. Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua. But will the fight actually happen? And if it does eventually happen, will it actually happen when it still matters as much as it theoretically would right now? Unfortunately, I think the answer to that question is probably not. Although to be sure, I definitely hope I'm wrong about this. Because a fight between Fury and Joshua is undoubtedly the single most important match that can possibly be made at this time. I just have doubts that it will actually come together anytime before 2022, at the earliest. And by that point, it may not command the same type of significance. For starters, there is all this uncertainty surrounding COVID. Boxing is a sport that heavily relies on the live gate, and a fight of this magnitude might be difficult to come together given that uncertainty. When Povietkin defeated White, you could see the referee wearing a mask. So nobody knows if and when life will ever fully return to normal, and that's potentially a huge obstacle. 
Then you have all the normal obstacles that come with the bullshit from sanctioning bodies and their mandatory obligations, where they don't give a shit about boxing fans. These sanctioning bodies seem far more concerned about lining their own pockets. And this often means denying fans the fights they want to see that make sense. Look no further than the fact that AJ is defending his unified championship against Pulev. And that's just one of his mandatory obligations. The others which will be necessary in due time per the whims of the alphabet bodies. And of course, the other big obstacle here is that Fury and Wilder are contractually obligated to have a third meeting. Fans don't seem too interested in this one, although maybe more interested than AJ versus Pulev, but unfortunately this third fight seems inevitable. So the politics of boxing not only prolongs the process of making the fights that fans want, but it also endangers everything. Because this is heavyweight boxing where a single punch can change the outcome of a fight. Look no further than Anthony Joshua getting stopped by Andy Ruiz Jr. in June of last year. Back then, before that fight, the fight fans really wanted was a showdown between AJ and Wilder. It never came together, and the aura surrounding that would-be mega bout has dwindled considerably, as Wilder and Joshua have both lost since interest in a showdown between the two had reached an all-time high. Who knows? Maybe Pulev can surprise everyone and shake things up like Ruiz did. Or maybe Wilder will be more focused and find a way to land that powerhouse punch that keeps Fury down. I don't think either of those scenarios are very likely, but what the hell do I know? Anyone who's followed my channel knows that I don't know shit about boxing. My predictions suck out loud. But what I do know is that anything can happen, and promoters, boxers, and alphabet bigwigs alike, none of them should be counting their chickens prematurely. Look no further than COVID derailing the entire boxing business landscape, where the business is still scrambling to make the best of a new playing field. With all of these potential obstacles, I have a hard time believing that a fight between Fury and Joshua will come together any time before 2022. Will it still be relevant then? Sure, maybe, but it's impossible to say. And the more time that passes, the more things that could go wrong to derail it, and the uncertainty of the proposition looms stronger. What I do know is that now, right now, there is no bigger matchup that can be made in all of boxing. That's the fight we want. Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua for the undisputed heavyweight championship. Unfortunately, I am not very hopeful that this one will happen while it still matters as much as it would right now. Such is the sad state that boxing fans have long endured. But who knows? Maybe the shifting business practices resulting from COVID-19 will result in innovation that helps bring us the big fights we want when they matter. And perhaps the boxing gods will bless us fans next year with a Fury Joshua mega bout for undisputed heavyweight supremacy. One can only hope. So what do you think? Will a fight between Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua actually happen when it still matters? Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.